Calvin, we're live. Oh my lord, we're going already. Episode nine. Nine. Holy, Baby, fuck. it's happening. It's getting. We're getting big, man. We're we're one. Yeah, bro. We're, we're one away from the big double digit. From the big deca cast. <laughs> deca cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. How's your day? My day went swimmingly. Um, I fucking <laughs> dude. Uh, my day started with a fucking whack attack. Um, so I was driving to work this morning. I was like five minutes late, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I hop in the car and um, check the mailbox or whatever. And then I uh, so like my commute starts. I kind of drive down this residential street. And then I turn right onto this back alley and then turn right again onto this kind of like more main road, right? And as I turned onto this uh, main road, you know, I kind of, there's parked cars all the way down both sides. And I kind of pull out, you know, I'm looking, trying to see. Nobody's coming from the left lane. I'm turning right, okay? So I go. And as I just kind of barely pull out, this guy comes by about 60 kilometers an hour and he's half in the left lane. But he fucking came this close to my car at like 60 kilometers oh. an hour. Dude, if I was, if I pulled out half a second earlier, I'd probably be fucking dead. Like, no You're lie. Really? Dumb, yeah. Dumb oh, way. dude, because like it was so close, man. And this guy was fucking cooking it too. Like, he was not going slow. Oh. Fucking guy, like, there was for sure less than six inches between my bumper and his car when he went by. Because the fucking guy was in the left lane, right? Yeah, we Yeah. So uh, I had a an instant fucking uh, stare down with my mortality this morning on the way to work. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was uh it was pretty gnarly, but uh I think that kind of comes with uh, a greater appreciation for life when something like that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, first thing you start thinking about is like, holy fuck, like I was about to go home for the weekend and if that would have fucking been it for me, like mm-hmm. my parents would be like, "Oh fuck, like he was about to come home in 3 days and now Oh man. Fucking that's it, you know? That's, but I mean, yeah, man. It's always uh it's always a uh, like an uncomfortable thing when yeah. when you have something like that and you kind of sit there for a second yeah. and you're like that just would have been like instant lights out. Oh yeah, 100%. Know? There's yeah. no way I would have survived that. I mean, it it's also like the thing with car accidents that like it's kind of morbid, but it always scares me a little yeah. bit is like you know what happens if like you're in that accident and you don't die right yeah. away and you're just like alone in your car with like a shattered pelvis and yeah. a, you're everything's bleeding and it everything hurts yeah man. and you're just laying there like this is it for me yeah like that would just be so horrible that's man. a that's a scary thought right it, it is man it's uncomfortable properly spooky but yeah dude that was just like the fucking the the beginning of my day today so it's been a, an interesting day i mean i'm glad you're okay man yeah me too man it, it definitely fucking gave me a spook and the other thing about it too was that i, I wasn't wearing my seatbelt when that happened either because i you know i just like pulled out of my fucking house right but now i'll be uh putting that fucking <laughs> seatbelt on before the bitch is in drive you know yeah but it, it's those I'm fucking sure. it's those you know habits you get into that you you never really think about you're like oh whatever like i fucking drove like 10 meters down the street before i put my seatbelt on but then something like that happens right yeah yeah it's i mean that's the kind of thing that it's like uh really easy to get out of the habit of as well like you know you just don't take it too seriously a uh, short drive whatever it is like maybe you trust your own driving yeah. but like like this instance is it's not your own driving it's yeah. someone else's you could you could be doing absolutely nothing wrong and still get and abs- still that's it get absolutely yeah. throttled yeah, man. But yeah, that was uh, that was my day. And most of what uh, what I thought of today. Um, how about you, Calvin? How'd your day go? I was really hot out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was like a pretty. I'd say it's a pretty normal day. Um, I do have this like gross heel infection thing though. Words really really bugging me. It's like pretty swelled out, and uh, I pulled a bunch of little pebbles out of it. Um, <laughs> Like I went in with the needle nose pliers this morning. No it way. It was, yeah. blo- oh, it hurt so much. I could barely walk. And I was like, man, 
I got to deal with this. Yeah. I didn't know there was anything in there because I hit it and I thought it was just sore. Yeah. But then it wasn't healing and it was just getting tender. And now it's like red and swollen. And uh, I went in there with the needle nose pliers and uh, pulled out a bunch of pulled out a bunch of goodies. But I, <laughs> I think there might be more in there. It's, Oof, hard, it's dude. hard to say. Okay. So what happened to, to your fucking heel, man? Like, how did that happen? Um... I was maybe being a little irresponsible at the time and right. uh, we're in the river and uh, it was, um, I was walking in the, in the river on the slippery rocks mm. and I stepped on one of the, one of the rocks with algae on it right, and yeah. my foot slid back and when it slid back, it impacted a rock yeah. um, that was behind it and it just like. I don't know. It just, it just hit it. Like, yeah. I'm surprised there's stuff in there, you know, yeah. like I just would have thought it would have been like, a did bump. it hurt like a bitch at the time? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I really like the first few days I was limping because my heel was like bruised. Yeah. Now there's just like a little hole there yeah. that like isn't closing because there's stuff in there and my body. <laughs> and now you're going to be rubbing that on people tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll squeeze out everything I can first. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. we're we're going to jujitsu after or whatever. We got so, <laughs> yeah or whatever. Yeah, yeah, man. I got, just figured I'd throw it in. You know, we got some yeah, we got some, some context. I mean, it, it, in order to be a true podcaster, you need to do you, you some need to kind do the context. Arts. Yeah, so, yeah, man. I'm, yeah, that's I'm true. stoked. When was the last time you went, Parker? Um, the last time I went must have been July. July, June or July, maybe. Okay. We're... Um, it might have even been May. That's not too bad. Yeah. Um, but the last time I went before that was December. So yeah. it's been a minute for me. Like it's been, yeah, it's been quite some time. I find the hardest thing with jujitsu because I was doing it hardcore for a while. There's a little while where I was doing it five times a week kind of thing, right? Yeah. The hardest thing is like with jujitsu specifically once you fall out of the habit, like you go home for Christmas, which is what happened for me. And then I just never got back into it again. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that hasn't happened to me yet because I haven't been doing it for, mm -hmm. uh, for long enough, but yeah. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Um, do you know that today is, uh, Van Morrison's birthday? Who's that? Van Morrison. Van Morrison. Who's that? <laughs> Parker, Parker, jog my memory. Parker, 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 <laughs> buddy. Oh, word. That guy. Yeah, dude. It, Say it's, less. <laughs> it's his. It's his birthday today. Um, there's uh, there's a few other uh, a few other interesting birthdays in here. We got some philosophers today. Um. There was one that I saw earlier. Where is it? We're just going to leave that for now. I don't want to waste time looking at my computer screen. Um, yeah, bro. I can't believe you don't know who Van Morrison is. You're well, like, now I do. Well, you're, but you're like a, you're a bit of a classic rock guy to yeah. some extent, you know, that, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you can, I couldn't fucking name, you know, like 10 lead singers of these bands I listen to. So, uh, true. Yeah. All right. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you for now. I just like the way it sounds, <laughs> <laughs> man. So my, uh, my car doesn't have AC. I don't know if we've discussed oh, really, on, this, eh? on this podcast or not. The last two days, it's been so hot. It's been pretty hot, yeah. Yesterday, my cell phone overheated while I was sitting in the car driving yeah. home. So it, it was just, it was so warm in there because it's black Damn. interior. Man, the last two days when I've gotten home, I'm like, I'm just lightheaded. And right. It's like, it's, I'm so done. Like, How long I, is your commute? About 40 minutes. Word. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's, um, I really like the heat, so I drive without AC. I have good AC, but uh, like these last two days, I've been driving without it. If I'm like sitting in my car for an amount of time, I'll turn the AC on because it gets brutal. But man, do you not get really sweaty? Oh, I do. Oh. I just enjoy it. Like, I like, I like the heat, man. You like being warm. Yeah. How do you feel about the cold? Fucking hate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Really, yeah, I'm hate the opposite. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm chilling the cold. Yeah. The cold, the cold is good. Hey, I saw something really cool today. I tried to take a video of it, but it didn't really come through on video. 
um, when I was uh, when I was working, I was putting a uh, I was putting a nut onto a piece of three eighths ready rod that was about a foot long. Right. And when I went to like flick it to spin it on, yeah. the vibration of the rod caused the nut to go up and down like really? that on the threads and so it was switching direction yeah. in a phase like it was like um it wasn't random like it was like some yeah. there was some kind There's of a frequency frequency interaction yeah. that changes the direction of that nut yeah. back and forth yeah which i i have no idea how that works it's I very cool I, I don't know why but it was really neat i yeah. might have to try and go find out why and yeah. uh, and come back on the next well I, I know there's um there's these little toys you can buy um not toys but like a little little you know gadget type mm. thing right <laughs> a, little, uh, a little gizmo yeah a little gizmo exactly yeah. um because one of my buddies in school had this uh in machining school or whatever he had this fucking little bronze rod and it had like an electronic like uh touch switch mm -hmm. on the bottom and it would vibrate at a certain frequency that the nut would go up and then it would come back down uh with the uh electronic switch yeah so it's it's the same it is. same principle, right? Why does that work? I don't know. I have no clue, man. I kind of gotta know. Yeah. Whatever. That along like, with wave theory. Again, yeah. again, we'll leave it for now. Yeah. yeah, man. We still we still haven't truly gotten. Into well, I that I did yet. end up looking to because how long ago was that that we first dove into that? That was uh, episode five. Yeah. So that was like probably a month and a half ago that we first were talking about it. Mm -hmm. We were talking about James Webb Space Telescope. And uh, I think I looked into it like two or three weeks later. So it's been like three or four weeks since then. Yeah. Um, basically, it has to do with um, how much energy is in the wave, right? You know, shorter wavelength, higher energy. Yeah. And so, you know, when the wave goes through a wall or an object, um, the more energy the wave has, the more energy gets absorbed. That's basically what it comes down to. Oh, At, okay. that, that's as it pertains to sound. Light is actually a little bit different. Yeah, I, I, could, I could imagine yeah. EMF has a bit of a different yeah. effect to it. But I mean, from an energy perspective, I think the principle is still the same. Like, mm -hmm. like infrared, infrared is like very weak. Yeah. But you get up to like cosmic rays, yeah. you know, like gamma rays. It's the super high intensity short wavelengths yeah. that just absolutely fry your body if yeah. they touch you. Well, and then, and then there's also radio waves too, right? Like I can have a radio here in my basement and it'll probably work yeah. with the antenna. Whereas there's no visible light getting in from outside, right? Yeah. Totally, man. Yeah. Hey, did you see the, uh, the latest, uh, James Webb image that was processed by NASA? Uh, which one was it? Um, it was the phantom galaxy. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, it's very cool. I'll, uh, I'll show it to you in a second. Sure. Um, but uh, I, I learned something about um, the James Webb that's pretty interesting, uh, what they're doing with the, uh, the files that they're capturing. So those f initial four images that we saw, um, those were all, they're taken, um, the images are taken by NASA, um, and then they have like essentially a series of raw files that they then hand to their people who process them in, in Photoshop um, to make them appear as in visual color to us because, again, they're wavelengths that mm -hmm. we can't see. And what they're doing with their images now is they're taking pictures of things like every day, but we're not seeing releases every day because they're not getting NASA to process all the images. Right. They're yeah. releasing the raw files to the public. And so lots of people, amateur right, uh, yeah. space image processors are taking the files yeah. and then working with them themselves to try and construct images out of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's why we're not seeing new images every day is because right. they're just not processing them all on their own. They're yeah. just releasing the raw files. That's cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'm in a, a space discord um server oh yeah yeah and uh there's this one you know sub chat in the in the discord server where uh these guys are doing that they're processing these james 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 wait what the fuck james webb space telescope Wames, the wames jeb <laughs> the wames jeb fuck <laughs> i i had a brain aneurysm there <laughs> um yeah they're doing the processing uh at home or whatever and then they compare it to the ones that nasa did 
Yeah. And it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Some of the is, differences there. That is neat. Yeah. So here's the uh, here's the latest one. You may want to lean a little closer for the look, but that was the uh, that was the most recent uh, space image that's been handed our way. Dude, that's gnarly. <laughs> yeah, man. That, I, that has psychedelic vibes. I, yeah, like I kind of refuse to believe that that's a thing that exists, you know? Like. Give me one second, huh? Yeah, man. I'll give you one second. What's this guy doing? Sorry, folks. Uh, we have Otto joining us very shortly, so I just wanted to make sure the door was unlocked for him. Yeah, word. No, yeah. I, I broke in and then locked it. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, those guys are moving up or around there. I heard one of them go outside, so oh, I just yes. wanted to double check. Oh, very yeah. fair. Since my phone is recording video, I can't just mm. check if yeah, yeah. Otto texts me. Word, bro. So, uh, yeah, anyways... You should show the uh, you should show the viewers that image when the, I will uh, when send the, that picture when, when my the time way. Comes I will uh, I will save image as right now before I forget. So uh, you mentioned that you uh, you had a topic for us. Parker. Yeah, I mean it, it's a little bit goofy for sure, but uh, oh, that's it, okay, bro. It, it's uh, it's something that you know I kind of I kind of enjoyed or whatever. Um, since our podcast is called how many house cats yeah um i i watched a uh a gameplay uh video oh uh, was yeah. it of stray it was of stray i'm heavily considering buying that game. dude I, I watched the full playthrough yeah it, it's incredible it, it um, looks really dope so i i was gonna kind of dive into the storyline of it but since you're considering buying it i'm um, just gonna i'm gonna oh, scratch okay. that yeah because okay. dude yeah it's a it's a good it's a good game. Um, Gameplay I'm, wise, it's not super crazy, but the storytelling is on point. I mean, yeah. I feel like there's a place for games like that. You exactly. Know? Like if I want an immersive gameplay, yeah. I can go to something else. Yeah. You know. Um. You know that cat type beat. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> from man. yesterday, I showed I you. That That's from beat. the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insert the cat type yeah. beat here. Yeah, man. The uh, the cat type beat was was pretty slapping yeah it was pretty slapping yeah, right yeah. i was like just watching this gameplay go uh play through or whatever and then this fucking song comes on right it's like it's like a prompted song where you yeah. have to do stuff to get it to play yeah. um and i was just like sitting on my couch i'm like, like oh whoa, shit son whoa. like this slaps bro <laughs> yeah it was super that, good game though that was the yeah. inaugural song on the new speakers too. yeah that was the first track yeah <laughs> with this cat, cat type, type beat, beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like that may have to be uh a song title uh, yeah. on the album yeah <laughs> It might have to be cat type beat. Well, so far we have Tuesday and cat type yeah. beat. We we can sample uh, some audio from the cat type beat for it too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be sweet. Yeah, dude, super fucking sick game. Yeah, I I love uh, I, when Damer was here and we were we were playing Tuesday and he was like, yeah. "Yo, let me get on lyrics," and we're like, "Word," and then he's like. I'm getting faded on a Tuesday. <laughs> I'm fucked up on a Tuesday. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this see, is the route we're going to <laughs> not see. This is the direction. <laughs> not see, this is the direction we were going to go, yeah. but all right, I'm here for it. Well, man. dude, it's funny because the thing with Damer singing is I've heard the guy sing in a way that he did not sing that night. Yeah. And weird. dude, that guy's got some fucking pipes on him dude it's yeah. actually unreal uh it takes him quite a bit to warm up to to get into that or yeah. whatever i think but uh he was yeah. also not the oh most yeah he sober. Was, yeah he was pretty fucking <laughs> mangled yeah <laughs> you two are wrestling outside he's like i'm eight beers deep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just fucking mid wrestle <laughs> that's so that funny so funny yeah he's he's a strong he's a strong guy oh yeah he yeah. is yeah yeah, I, I imagine if I wrestled with him now, he'd probably have no problem uh, taking me on. But yeah, uh, back when I was doing jujitsu full time, it, it was always pretty pretty days. even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're no, I'm excited for tonight, man. It's, yeah, dude, it'll be fun. It's gonna be mega fun. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, we're gonna finish up this podcast and then we're gonna have to fucking hustle out the door. We're gonna go fight. Yeah. yeah, you haven't showered yet, eh? I have. Oh, you yeah, did? Oh, I nice. have. Okay, yeah, cool. I had showered right before this. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Parker was very adamant about this yeah. last night. You can't go to jujitsu stinky. Yeah. I get it. It's like it's a. It's kind of disrespectful. You yeah. Know? It's like no one wants to. No I mean, like, grab a sweaty man. Yeah, round 12, it's a different thing, right? Because you're sweaty, they're sweaty, like, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if you, if it's round one or round two, and mm-hmm. this guy just fucking reeks, you're like, <laughs> yeah. dude, what is this, chemical warfare? Like, <laughs> what are these chem- tactics, chem- dude? Chemical warfare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's horrid. Yeah. Oh. Or like you'll you'll fucking be passing someone's guard and then they'll just let one rip. Yeah, <laughs> that's brutal too. So, um, given that the uh, the the podcast name is uh, how many house cats? Word. I've got something to talk about. Hell yeah, dude. Um, that's not it's not extensive. Uh, I'm sure other people have seen this because it's uh, been trending around on Netflix. But it's like inside the mind of cats, mm. um, and. Uh, they teach all about the the cat psychology and you know the things with the things that go on with cats. It's really cool, man. Uh, yeah, that the, sounds interesting. Yeah, the um, the house cat has a very interesting spine to to start mm. off with. They have it would have to. They have more vertebrae than I like. I, they said they said almost every other mammal. So that there's some kind of other mammal that has more, but they have a lot of vertebrae and then they've got in between their discs it's almost like a like a soft rubbery compound Mm. tissue that uh that compresses and stretches as they move and so if you watch a cat run their spine is going like that when they run like it, it arches up and then it extends and it's like it's it would basically be like if you tried to like move your body like a caterpillar to walk right. like it's like a tremendous amount of spinal contortion that would drive humans crazy yeah. but their their spine is very fluid and uh yeah how much time have you spent around house cats not a whole lot didn't have one growing up uh there we had a bunch of cats out at my grandma's farm you know you know how sometimes cats just they'll like tweak out like yeah they'll, they'll be fine and then they'll just like hoo, 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 yeah <laughs> and then just go and like take off there's an actual thing for that really um it's called a frap f-r-a-p stands for frantic random activity period and hmm. so they go through and it's it's linked to their circadian rhythm as well which is why it often happens um in the evenings interesting they, we we've always just called it the witching hour right um, but I, I didn't know that there was a scientific name for it but just after the sun goes down cats get weird man they're you'll see them they'll like walk into the room and they'll like stand there and then their whole body will like ripple a little bit <laughs> and be like what what are you doing man <laughs> <laughs> they're like the the tail will start like doing like the flicks back and forth and you, their pupils dilate like crazy right. man they get the biggest eyes and then then they just start tearing shit up and they just have to destroy stuff they got to run around they got to kill things and then they're okay they just got to like get that out of their system interesting yeah i didn't realize that that was a legitimate piece of cat psychology hmm. but uh but it is it's interesting though that show like they try so hard to like um like win the battle of like cats versus dogs right you know it's like um they they like do all these experiments to like try and like prove the intelligence of a cat which is definitely like there like oh, they're, they're, they're smart and they they can recognize their name and their owners but they don't serve people in the same way that dogs do right but it's just really funny when like when the cat, when there's like two people, there's like the cat's owner and then like a stranger, mm-hmm. and they test when the cat comes into the room, um, if the cat goes to its owner or the stranger, and uh, the cat goes to its owner, and they're like, oh, it recognizes its owner. Cats are <laughs> smart, and it's like, ah, it's a little, <laughs> it's like maybe not quite as impressive as you guys are cracking it up to yeah. be. Like maybe wouldn't have put that one in the documentary, yeah. but you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever go for it fight the battle for the cats someone's someone's gotta do it but yeah man 
Um, both are really interesting animals. Yeah. Dogs and cats. They're both so cool in their own way. Yeah, man. Yeah. Do you do you have a do you have a favorite um, like non domesticated animal? I'm not sure. I really like seeing deer in nature. I think that's a really cool thing. When you're hiking and you see a deer, like, not that they're super rare. Yeah. But that's a cool sight. What's that? You said that's a cool sight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, totally, man. I mean, there's there's something. I can remember uh, going up to um, Evan Thomas mm. um, uh, a couple years ago. And... Uh, I was up there, you know, 20 kilometers away from the other humans, just completely alone mm -hmm. in this like alpine meadow. And I came around the trees and I hadn't seen anything in like a day and a half. Right. Like clearing in the trees. And there's just one single doe that's just like standing there eating in the grass, mm -hmm. just like so peaceful along this huge mountain backdrop in the green grass and the trees. And it was just like, Oh man, this is cool. Yeah, there's right. something. There is something very, uh, very serene about it. Yeah, you know that Definitely. there's uh, there's over sixty different species of deer. Yeah, that makes like, sense. Worldwide. Yeah, yeah, man. There's a whole load of them. And uh, are see. they in every continent? Deer? Ooh, probably. I'd imagine they would be. I'm not sure. I think. I don't know. Like does like are are deer in Australia? I don't know. Australia is a weird place. For, it is for, a weird for, place for species. For, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Australia has um has some issues with their uh, marsupial population right. due to house cats. Right. Their they're, uh, their little their little rodent like marsupials are uh, slowly disappearing because cats eat them. Damn. The great predators, cats. That's crazy. Yo, did you know that uh, deer can jump up to 10 feet high? No fucking way. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Yeah. They also have 310 degree vision. Damn. Yeah, man. That's gnarly. What degree vision do you think humans have? 120. You're going 120, eh? Yeah, I think so. I would say it's a little more. Like, if you, like, look... Like straight ahead, I can see my fingers. Yeah, you move might be here, right, actually. And I can see my fingers move there. You yeah, know? you're right. We do have more than 120 for sure. What do you, might even be more than 180. I think it's maybe slightly more than 180. That's really <laughs> wild. I like today on the podcast. You just fucking <laughs> <laughs> testing the human field of view. Yeah. Do it at home, folks. Try it for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Um, that's all I got for animal facts. Um, what else? What else is uh, what else is going on, Parker? What can we talk about, son? I don't know, man. See, the thing the thing is, we done we did a podcast. What like four or five? Yeah, days four ago. days ago. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. It's tough to like consistently podcast. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. And we like don't want to stretch it too hard for the topics. Yeah. We need that weirdo. Uh, well, we could just pull Joe Rogan and just talk about the same thing every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know about DMT, Parker? Personally, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I heard of it? Yes. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't going to talk about DMT. It was just a, yeah. it was a Rogan joke. It was a Rogan joke and a good one. Yeah, man. I miss the cocaine bear. The cocaine bear. You remember talking about the cocaine yeah, bear? Yeah, I do remember talking about the. Was that on John's episode? That was on yeah. John's episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, the cocaine bear. For those of you who didn't listen to the last episode, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, Parker. Balls in your court, boss. The balls in my court. Jeez, that's high pressure. quick break <laughs> <laughs> all right we're back after our little brainstorming break that was a uh, <laughs> peak podcast professionalism you yeah, know? Baby. <laughs> um yeah i do have something to talk about i uh i just purchased my uh 
flight to Lisbon, Portugal today. You're going to Portugal, man. Yeah. Well, did I did I tell you about uh, my trip this year? Well, I mean, you told me about Japan. Yeah, and then that fell through for for travel restriction reasons or whatever. Yeah. Um. So yeah, now I'm going to um, Lisbon, Portugal. Very flying cool. into Portugal. Just bought my ticket today, and then um, we're gonna be taking the train. I'm going with my ex roommate. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're gonna be taking the train um, into Spain, Madrid. Barcelona, through Montpellier, France, into uh, Nice, Nice, France, yeah. um, and then I've all, heard like nice Monte Carlo cool. kind of thing yeah, too, yeah, Monaco. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna be spending a few days in Nice and Monaco, so that'll be very cool. The that'll French be, Riviera. That'll be so yeah, fun. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then after that, we're not sure because we have two weeks in uh, in the Mediterranean. Um, so my flight back home is from Athens, Greece. Oh wow! Yeah. So you're so, you're doing a pretty good trek through yeah. Europe. So man. so what's up in the air right now is whether we're going to be flying from Nice, France, into Athens, or if we're going to keep on ripping the train down through Italy, and then there's a uh, ferry from uh, Brindisi, Italy, uh, to Agumanitsa, Greece, and then nice. Yeah, it's a nine-hour ferry ride. That's um, cool. I yeah. highly suggest you go through Italy. Yeah. Have you been to Italy? I have not. I haven't been across the pond yet. No way. Dude, the only other country I've been to oh, is the States. Dude, you're so gonna this is going to be so an epic fun, an epic man. adventure for me kind of thing like Man, if if you're yeah. there up up on that uh like northern-ish end of Italy, mm -hmm. Venice is up there. And yeah. And if you can swing Venice, even for a day, yeah, because Venice may not survive our lifetimes. Yeah, true. So if you can, yeah, because I will be, you know, at one point I'll be, you know, three hundred kilometers away from Venice, right? Whether yeah. I go there or not. So, you yeah, know, I, 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 you, I mean, you recommend going to Venice, eh? I would, I would recommend yeah. a lot of Italy, honestly, yeah. man. It's, it's so, so yeah, because we're gonna be one hundred percent. We're going through Florence and Rome, yeah. Right, and then uh, down to Brindisi, and then there's a couple other cities on the way down there. Yeah, but um, Florence is very cool too. Yeah, you've been to Florence as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, I've been to Venice, uh, Florence, Siena, and Rome, and then the Chianti region as well. Very cool. Uh, the the Italian countryside. If you can, mm. if you can make it's so cool, man. If you can make it there, like there's, I mean, there's so many things you could do. Um, I, I actually there's something I could definitely uh, I could definitely go on here about Italy if you're interested. Yeah, please do. Um, there's a horse race in uh, uh, in Siena. Uh, Where is Siena geographically? Let me let me give you a uh, let me give you a better idea here. Let's pull up Siena, Italy. All right, so geographically, Siena is. Let's do a little, a little zoom out action here. Siena is. Let's see. Do I have scale here? Um, Siena is about fifty kilometers uh, south of Florence. Oh, word! So it's kind of between uh, Florence and Rome. Yes, it word. is. Word. Yeah, yeah. And Siena is a lot smaller than Florence, um, but it's really, really neat. So Siena is. Um, a walled city if I'm, oh cool if, if i'm not mistaken um and it is oh man it's so cool like the just the the culture there is um much more um true italian i mm. guess you could say it's much less uh, tourist inclusive um but i mean i don't consider that a bad thing no me neither necessarily yeah for some people you know it's not for them yeah but uh but yeah, Siena Siena is very cool. Um, now let me let me get into the horse race in Siena because uh, it's a pretty. Uh, now what pretty, sets this apart from other horse races? I guess you're about to go into it, right? Yeah, man. Okay, so Palio de Siena, that's what it's called. Um, I'm gonna whip up the Wikipedia here. So the first thing that separates it from other horse races is it's not on a track. Um, it's not on like, uh, like an oval track. Oh. It's held in a square in the middle of Siena. Um, Interesting. And it's like, uh, I could, I could find a, a picture here for you. It's very, uh, 
historically rooted in the city. It's it's been around for quite a long time. Um, now, yeah, here. So here's here's one picture. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, and so it's like crazy. I'm pretty sure they're bareback. Yeah, they are. So there's no saddles um in in traditional you know like kentucky derby style horse racing that's it's very like cool see yeah, our uh saddles and jockeys and like you know they get all the it's very like you know posh and proper this this is like some rowdy rowdy horse racing so now they have barricades they never used to have barricades mm. like the track was formed by people and right. they would have a like bunch of people in the middle and then people around the outside yeah and uh it's not they don't just they don't bring in horses that are um like track horses that are on the racing circuit um it's they have these um uh clans so to speak or uh, contrade is the italian word for them um there's 17 total um and uh, only 10 participate each year mm. but they're um regional um like districts of the city um and it's almost like uh having like 17 like football teams in, really in, in your city where that's like, cool it's like from your area yeah you know, your neighborhood yeah. uh horse racing team yeah <laughs> Yo, that's sick, yeah. Dude. yeah it's it's kind of like that and uh it's it's just like um i mean it, it's just so hardcore uh i think Let's see. So the um, the origins, the the first. Uh, oh, okay. So it started in the um, started. So these public races um, organized by these clans started in the 14th century um, and went onwards from there. They picked up um, a lot of popularity when the uh, Grand Duke of Tuscany uh, outlawed bullfighting in uh, 1590. Right. So when when bullfighting was no longer a thing, this horse racing kind of took hold, mm. and so it's like a five hundred year tradition of doing these horse races in this city, and so that's what I mean when I say it's more culturally rooted. It's like very, it's very unique to this city. Um, it's just it's just a wild thing, man. Like little to no safety measures. Like crazy rivalries, people getting stabbed. Like no it's, way, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. It's it's nuts. It's just like it's just total chaos. Um, That's gnarly. Did you witness one of these events? I did not witness one of these events, um, but uh, it's kind of it's a big part of the city. Like it's it's like their Calgary Stampede, right? You know, it, it's it, I mean, it goes back a lot further than the Stampede yeah. does, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they do it a little they do it a little safer now because they kind of have to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like they, they've got yeah they've got a whole section like there's like five paragraphs on the Wikipedia about controversy and equine security measures and so because it basically just went from this like outlandish bareback yeah. horsing event to like the modern world where they're like okay so we can't have people getting killed at this yeah. anymore so <laughs> this is this is hilarious yeah. so um there's uh there's lots of incidents in these races um uh, according to uh the anti-vivisection league a total of 48 horses have died from 1970 to 2007 on average one dead horse per year <laughs> oh my god uh, however the calculations carried out by the supporters of the paleo for the same period um which include all the tests held before the real race give a rate of 2.05 percent of fatal accidents mm. per ride only 2.05 that's crazy yeah no 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 big deal um but yeah now they now they do uh, like alcohol tests for the riders. Oh yeah, for the, for the jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> they make them fucking blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have to have medical staff on site. Um, they can't use uh, uh, certain types of horses that are uh, not fit for that kind of running because that's one part that plays into it as well as the genetics. The genetics of the horses is if they're not meant to do that kind of extreme activity it's like 
um, it happens to cattle too. Um, like when you're uh, when you're running cattle that have been in a, like a, a standstill for a certain amount of time, they can die from exhaustion like mm-hmm. really quickly. Um, and so same kind of thing with the horses. If you just like scrub up some horse from the Italian countryside and you're like, we got nothing. We got to use this one this year, which you know happened somewhere in mm-hmm. those 500 years. Can't do that anymore. But yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a real crazy thing. You'll, you'll see it if you go, there's lots of like cool paintings and stuff around yeah. it, around the city of it. Yeah. But yeah, man, Italy, Italy is just, uh, spectacular it's such a unique place and the food is unreal oh yeah i've heard lots about italian you're gonna have to get into the wine for sure oh definitely i will you're gonna be you're gonna be hitting the wine scene yeah that's uh it's gonna be so neat man when are you going uh october 8th to the 23rd oh a big old trip yeah two weeks yeah Yeah, nice oh that's awesome man. yeah no i took the time off in like june yeah 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 Oh, that's that's really cool, man. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm going back home this weekend is because I told my parents I was like, you know, I'm not gonna be coming home for Thanksgiving because of the way this trip kind kind of lines up, right? Yeah. So guys, so I'm going guys home this be weekend. Across the pond. I'm gonna be across the pond. Yeah. That's very neat. Yeah, man, I can't wait. It'll be super cool to finally see something, you know significantly foreign from oh, yeah. our culture here right yeah like i went to miami last year and don't get me wrong like it's quite a bit different there mm-hmm. than here but yeah. i mean there's all it's very north american right yeah. like yeah and cuban yeah. and cuban yeah <laughs> but yeah man uh it'll be kind of cool to to find myself me and my buddy will find ourselves kind of lost in the language barrier which i'm also pretty excited about I a, think lo- it'll be a cool. lot of people speak english yeah, yeah. and i figure that that's mm-hmm. the case mm-hmm. you know i don't think we're ever gonna run into an issue where you know because we don't speak the native language that we're gonna get into like a shitty situation yeah. but it is gonna mm-hmm. be hindersome right the the one the one thing that that um i did notice um with with italy in particular is um you got to pay attention to your surroundings um, mm. because, um, I mean, one, there's like lots of pickpockets right. and that, that sort of thing. That's, sure. that's a, a real issue in Spain, but uh, in Italy too, lots of yeah. pickpockets. Like you got to keep your stuff. You got to be pretty aware. And um, because it's so foreign, you can kind of get like caught up in just like walking mm-hmm. and uh checking out a city which i don't get me wrong i love to do but there were multiple times when i was in italy where you'd be walking and you'd kind of get to a certain point and you'd be like i don't know about this because yeah. it, it doesn't look the same as like a bad neighborhood in calgary yeah like it's it's totally different right it's it you can't you can't compare it to your like previous yeah. conceptions of what that of looks what a like. bad neighborhood you, looks like yeah, yeah. you just kind of you just kind of got to be aware because you'll, yeah. you'll pick up on it it has a feel sure. but yeah you just you just got to kind of watch out for that sort of thing right. because it is it is different and uh depending on the way you dress as well and the way you look um you can get targeted as mm-hmm. a foreigner for certain things you just it's just like very different than if you were to go to the United States, yeah. as you know. But that comes like that's one downside. For every one downside, there's like a hundred upsides. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just it's yeah. so cool, man. You're I mean, you you got to be careful. Dude, you're like have so much fun. Eh, anytime you you travel, it's a risk, right? There Absolutely. there's lots of risks involved with traveling. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay in your home city your whole life? I mean, you gotta you gotta live yeah. a, a fulfilling life, right? Yeah. So, oh, um, that's that's so exciting yeah dude Dude, i can't wait i haven't been to any of those other countries on that list though france spain portugal greece no none of them i've i've done iceland uh the uk uh Mm -hmm. not ireland but scotland and england yeah uh and then norwales they always want mentioned in that Mm -hmm. list um and then uh and then italy as well but yeah, Scotland. Scotland was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you uh, talked about on uh, episode six uh, about the um, Scottish Highlands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they're very similar to the Alberta foothills. They are like yeah. a lot of people would find them fascinating, yeah. but here it's like yeah. it's cool. Yeah, there are other aspects of Scotland. Though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the ge- geographically though, definitely the most impressive place I've been is Iceland. 
Like, right. It's yeah. Because because what month did you go? The oh, I went. It was in the summer, I believe. It was mm. August. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, it's like. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's like it's such an interesting culture mm-hmm. there. Um, because it's, they're like Viking people. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah. They were like Icelandic. Se- yeah, yeah. Settled, settled by Vikings. Yeah. Um, and there's kind of this, um, it's like a, an interesting like lag, I guess you could say to like the rest of, you know, Europe and the, what is kind of in that area. Right. I mean, it's, it's on its own, but it's very culturally isolated. And so because they're, a lot of their values are around conservation of the land and, um, you know, keeping Iceland what it is. Mm-hmm. And they've been that way for, you know, as long as time has gone on. They um, they don't have the same level of um, architecture or like big cities. Right. Nothing like that exists. Like there's one church in Iceland that's like cool and in Reykjavik. Mm-hmm. But aside aside from that, it's like the cities are nice but that's not why you go to ice yeah i i assume you just had a layover there or did you no, actually no, no, no. visit I spent seven days in oh it, wow in okay yeah yeah interesting it's because uh, most of the time you hear about people who have been to iceland it's almost always a layover right yeah but yeah. but iceland iceland knows that iceland yeah. knows that and so their tourism board actually um has worked with a bunch of airlines to arrange like five day layovers Mm -hmm. in in iceland where really yeah where where you can be booked on the same route of flights yeah but they just have this gap in the middle where right where you can experience very cool i think is a great move because it gets people you know to see iceland and i think they're very controlled in the way they go about Mm -hmm. exposing iceland to the world right um because they're it's like the just imagine like the whole island is a national park. Yeah, you know, it's like everything is contained. Any kind of human influence on the land is very contained. Right. Um, and part of that is a cultural thing, but also um, lots of research is done on Iceland because it's one of the newest land masses on Earth. Um, right. Because Interesting. It's, because it's a volcanic island. Yeah. It wasn't part of the whole Pangaea split. It's not like a is wasn't a break off from yeah. an original continent it was formed from after volcanic, the fact volcanic activity and so there's an area of iceland um that uh the, it's kind of like a a journey to the center of the earth kind of vibe right um it's inside a volcano um where there's this uh, volcanic formation that at one time would have been a volcano but the whatever kind of magma was inside of the volcano um, drained out while the uh, external shell or form of the volcano stayed. Mm -hmm. And so it created a very unique cavern inside that formed in a way that caverns don't usually form. And so it's like uh, it's an above ground cave, essentially. And they lower you in in this box from the top of the volcano down to the bottom. But that whole area in there is um, only about two and a half thousand years old. And so when you walk to it, it's like you stay on the path that's this wide and you do not step off of it. Right. Because all of that land is being watched by scientists and they're going, you know, what are the first steps of the formation of life on on new land? interesting wow. yeah and so they can they can conduct they can conduct studies and do research on the just the recent terrain um that's been created there so it's pretty cool that's because very cool lots lots and lots of neat stuff yeah uh, so many places to go man yeah yeah oh for sure and yeah. iceland iceland they, they call it the land of fire and ice because it's uh it's volcanically mm-hmm. active yeah um, but it's like covered by like 50 percent glaciers yeah. like there's four main glaciers in iceland right and, and some of them just go like right through the mainland like it's hmm. uh it's like it's not an ice block but there are large portions of it that are year round covered right. in glaciers yeah. but it's also not cold that's the funny thing is like i was expecting it to be like frigid you know like yeah. s- summertime like it's pretty northern i was like you know sure it's august but it's still gonna be chilly but it's like in the summer it's 
fairly comparable to here. And yeah. in the winter, it doesn't get as cold there as it does here. Yeah, because it's it's just an island. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's surrounded by the ocean, so it's more more temperate. Yeah, but yeah, just so neat, man. The way you've got like all this crazy geothermal activity, mm -hmm. where like um, you've probably seen like the the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. It's like uh, it's like this bright, almost like. Um, it's like a bluish white water that's almost iridescent. Oh, sure. I've seen pictures like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's very unique looking. And that's because of like a geothermal vent um, ah. that runs in the area. And the whole island is covered with this. There's so much of their power is completely sustainable geothermal power. Really? Iceland wow. is a big exporter of bananas for that reason. They, wow. uh, they grow bananas in Iceland in greenhouses and use geothermal heat. To, that's uh, so cool man. to grow to grow the bananas yeah. but the, also there's so much ice there and so you've got volcanoes going on over here yeah. and then you've got glaciers over there on this relatively small island dude, that's sick as fuck yeah dude the the remote the remote towns of iceland are uh, definitely definitely a unique experience mm -hmm. because of that um totally unique culture that you know like i said been separated for so long just just like these like neat quaint little towns where like no one's english is very good mm -hmm. and uh everyone's like really really nice people and icelandic women good women oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah man Damn, bro. iceland also has one of the lowest crime rates in the world what what's a what's an iceland uh, accent sound like Oh man, that's tough. They sound like they're eating marbles when they. Talk. <laughs> they're, they're like, the their their language, man. Like, have you have you ever looked at like an Icelandic phrase? No. Oh man, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like, I mean, when you just look at the the city, the, mm -hmm. the capital city, Reykjavik. It's yeah. like R E Y K J A V I K. Yeah. It's like yeah. Whoa. Okay, like yeah. that—that's out there. But when I was doing the fucking uh, capital city flashcards the yeah. first time that one came up, I was like, "Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? How do you say that?" Right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just uh, it's a cool place. They got um, they have a penis museum there. No way. Yeah, fucking man. Iceland. Yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. Um, I didn't go. Neither did my dad, but my mom yeah. and sister went <laughs> to the penis museum. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, but oh man, that uh, do you have a do you have a part of your trip that you're most stoked about? Nice and uh, Monaco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. The Riviera. Yeah, yeah bro. Oh, that's gonna be yeah. sweet. Also, the night I land. I mean, like your first night in a new place is always just fucking magical, right? Yeah. Like the day, because I land at nine thirty five a.m. in Lisbon, mm. and so that you know, just like you're gonna landing be so in the city, -like, and but it's fucking be so cool. Woo! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. When you walk out, have you ever been to Hawaii? No. Oh man. Um, Maui's Maui's airport is uh, open air, and so when you really? when you get off the plane and walk into the airport, it's just like boom, oh, and you feel the heat and like, the flowers. Like, and, what is this air? Yeah, it's just oh, it's crazy, man. It was the same thing with Miami for me too, because yeah. like just it's. Dude, the plants are so healthy that they, far down, that's right? That's a good way to describe like, it. They you, are. You can just, yeah. you can feel the life in the air and there's like an earthy tone in the atmosphere. Like you just like, you can you tell can you're like, this is a life. healthy place. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the people, but you know, the, yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I was in Miami a really long time ago. Right. Like I was I was younger than six years old right. before when I was in Miami. Sure. We went to Disney. Were World. you g getting on a cruise ship? Or yeah, man, the Disney tight. cruise. Tight. Yeah. Dude, I, I also have a Disney cruise and Disneyland uh, trip experience. Did you do yeah. the Disney cruise? Uh, I did the Disney cruise from Vancouver to San Diego and oh. then uh, drove up to Anaheim okay. and uh, did yeah. Disneyland there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Same idea, different, different yeah. side of the continent it yeah. when, I, when i look at it now like that's kind of a weird thing man like the disney cruise it like, is weird yeah. like they just have these massive boats yeah that like god knows how much and those... mickey mouse is chilling <laughs> out <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I do remember some like pretty fun stuff happening. Oh, on, dude. On well, because I, I went on the Disney cruise when I was 17, right? Did you really? When I was sorry, I was 16 at the time. <laughs> yeah, so it was a it was a different because uh, my sister was like seven years old, right? right? Oh, so so she, she yeah, it, it was her kind of kind of deal. So yeah. I was on I was on the oh. boat uh, at 16 years old what on this Disney think? cruise. Oh, dude, it was a fucking blast! Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, could, it was great. You, do they allow adults to drink on there? Like, yeah. is there? Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, lots yeah. of alcohol flowing on yeah. the Disney boat. One hundred percent. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All the yeah. all the kids. Mickey Mouse is yeah. babysitting the kids. Yeah. The dads are just getting crippled at the bar. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, neither of my parents yeah. drink anymore, and they yeah. didn't at that point either. So. Yeah. But yeah, you'd like you just. You'd be like walking on the boat at like midnight, right? Walk past the bar as a sixteen year old and there's just a bunch of fucking like dudes passed <laughs> out on the Disney boat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, we, it was a fun time and you know, uh you know mom and the kids are in the room yeah. just upset as dad yeah. slumped over. Well and the other cool thing about that cruise is that um Disney uh Disney has like a bunch of different groups for all the age ranges, right? And so right. I was I was chilling with uh I, I was chilling that. in this like um, like group area for everybody like 15 to 17 mm-hmm. right and so I just got to meet a bunch of people my own age and we just had a fucking blast for it was only a four day cruise it was super yeah. short it was Vancouver to San Diego but mm-hmm. it was a fucking blast man it was super fun were the uh, were the other people weird or were they were they pretty chill yeah, there were some weird ones <laughs> but um, you know we're all weird in our own way right yeah no, yeah there totally. were there were some strange people but the vast majority of of people were super chill and it was dude it was a lot of asians <laughs> dude like yeah it does yeah because i i posted like... a picture on instagram of me with all the people i met on this boat mm-hmm. right after after the trip mm-hmm. and like most of the comments were like parker's hanging out with fucking filipinos <laughs> but and then i looked and it was so true i was the only white kid in the picture <laughs> yeah. and there was like 30 mm-hmm. people yeah i went to... it was fun i went to a science camp uh, between seventh and eighth grade at MIU, right. I went to it was like a science and engineering summer camp. Uh, usually, I would do like active camps, you know. Like, um, I mean, the reason I was doing that was because I was in a mountain biking camp right. weeks before, and I proceeded to break my spine yeah, at word. that mountain biking camp. And so it was like no physical activity for me. What what can what fun things can I do mm-hmm. while being disabled? And uh, and that was one of them. And uh, they called me sour cream at the at the science and engineering camp. Because, no way. Yeah, man. I picked up sour cream on the first day because uh, there was a kid from Jordan there. It's an Arabic oh, yeah. kid. Wow. Spoke spoke four languages. No was, way. Was yeah, like fourteen years old, maybe Damn. something like that. And uh, and I he was. <laughs> He called me out and told me that I looked like I had sour cream for skin on the first day and then sour cream just stuck for the rest of the week. But I was the only white kid present oh, yeah. in, in that entire group. Yeah. 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 It was it was cool though, man. That was a really fun camp. Like I have a lot of a lot of really cool memories from that. Just doing science yeah. stuff. Did you ever do Bible camp growing up? I did. Yeah, dude. Bible camp was something crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I, my parents stopped letting me go. At what age? Um, oh man, I don't even remember. Probably like fourth grade, something mm-hmm. like that. Fourth, fifth grade. Um, I uh, it, there was an incident um, that what it wasn't at, really at the camp. It was afterwards mm-hmm. um, that uh, I can't exactly remember what the topic was, but I remember my parents asked me about the camp, and I it was something along the lines of like you know don't don't do this um don't do like what your parents or society tells you do this because it's what god wants you to do right um and then i remember telling that to my parents and they were like they they responded with something like you know well you actually you know it doesn't quite work like that and Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you have to follow the rules um and i i responded with they told us you would say that and no. yeah and, and, and at that point my parents were like this is a cult we yeah gotta, we, gotta, we gotta stop oh yeah man uh, there's some weird yeah. stuff that went down oh there. dude bible dude. camp is super culty it's super, super culty, culty bro <laughs> like it's just it's brutal right what do you, but what did it's you do so at bible fun. camp what were the what did you get up to 
Oh Dixie fuck! Was, um, you know, uh, my Bible camp had some super killer. Uh, um, it had a super killer skate park, oh, super nice. killer paintball field. Um, nice. They had a boat and tubes and wakeboards and yeah, knee boards. Yeah, they had a super nice uh, gun range. Yeah, yeah there was some sweet. cool shit that we did. Nice. Yeah. Yours sounds a lot more decked out. Than oh, dude, it was a, it was a pretty tight place. Um, and then we also played like games every night. Yeah. And um, the actual like camp, like it was a pretty massive camp, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was it was very like is very nice too like it's just like lush and green and, yeah. and just like nice landscapes kind of I, thing right I, I do remember um f- like feeling very like uh it's very welcoming mm-hmm. like when you're in that like little circle you know as yeah. a kid where like yeah. you're just you know mom and dad are gone for the week yeah and you're just you're just hanging out with all these other kids your yeah. age and you're just being kids and you're singing songs and like Fuck yeah. doing stuff. I yeah. was always elite being a farm kid too. Yeah. You know, Cause they have like, they had the little, um, the dummy for like roping, like mm. the lassos. Right. And they were like trying to teach kids how to lasso. And then, you know, I pull up and yeah. <laughs> heal it right yeah. off the bat. And they're like, well, oh yeah, no biggie. And then all the guns too. It was yeah. Like, you know, it was yeah, fun, bro. man. A lot of cool experiences there. Yeah. Oh, and they had fucking RC cars too. They oh. had the Traxxas RC cars, man. Ooh. That was a fucking blast, yeah. dude. I I had a Traxxas RC car. As yeah. A kid. Yeah. My uh, my grandma got me one for my birthday yeah. when I was really little, and uh, those things are like, they're pretty sweet, man. Yeah. They're they're legit. They yeah. are. They're fucking cool. And the next level is having like fucking you and seven other buddies racing them on this dirt track, <laughs> yeah. right? Like that's like oh, just this. crashing into each other. Yo, check out this fucking drift, Jared. And you like, <laughs> 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 yeah. oh man, yeah. I've, I've definitely found myself reminiscing on that more yeah. and more lately is like. It was so, mm-hmm. it was so free, man. You yeah. Just, you just did whatever and it yeah. didn't really matter. Like at the time it kind of seemed like it mattered, you know, like you'd get in trouble for things. Right. And, yeah. you know, but in the grand scheme, you know, you look back on it and you're like, man, I was really just living back then. Yeah. Like there were no rules for me. Yeah. You just, you just, ex- for sure. you just experienced life and, and everything was new. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I think, I think that's what I miss about it the most yeah. is like yeah. now experiencing new things is like something you have to seek yeah it's, yeah it's you like, have to put effort into it now yeah, if right you, if you don't want yeah. to experience new things you won't whereas as mm-hmm. a kid everything is new it's like it, you know each year is a new year in school yeah. new people new teachers new friends new sports doing doing just new things yeah. all the time that we're constantly well and novelty is just such an, an essence of life it at is. least in my opinion you know mm-hmm. you know people have their own yeah ideologies and whatever but yeah novelty just fucking it fills think, my tank you I know don't, yeah <laughs> I th- I, that's like the complete opposite of buddhism you know they're the, 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 Bo- <laughs> yeah, the buddhists are, are like be content with nothingness yeah <laughs> you're like no 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 nah, no bro <laughs> i want to see everything i want to do everything <laughs> yeah i want to go to monaco oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's gonna be sweet Hey, so we were we were talking about uh, about Disney, uh, right? Just yeah. just a little while back. Do you know about um, Disney's Go Away Green? No, no, no. It's, What's that? It's really cool. So um, Disney um, created a color um, that is now officially known as as Go Away Green, um, <laughs> and it was a it's a paint, um, and it looks like this. That's Go Away Green. It's, it's a pretty not nice green, you know, like it's, it's pretty ugly and like you don't, you don't really want anything to do with it. Um, in a place that's as bright as Disney where Mm -hmm. all of these things are going on, the doorways that they don't want you to enter the decorative doorways, whatever it is, they paint that color, they give it that color. Interesting. Um, And, uh. That go away green is um, it's an actual like it's psychologically tested and it's not just an ugly color, it's like a universal 
I don't need to go near that. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> that's and, interesting. And they subconsciously keep people away from the things that they don't want them going towards because of the color that they put on them. And they make everything else around it attractive to you. Yeah. Then they just slide in this vomit green door that's like, you know, where staff members go into yeah. or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, they, they came up with that color to, to prevent people from getting into places and things that they didn't want them to. That's super interesting. Kind of neat, hey? I, I wonder how the psychology behind that, that color mm-hmm. works. It, it, yeah. would be, it would be very interesting. I, um, I definitely have heard a lot of crazy stories about uh, Disney and the operations of Disneyland and Disney World. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're not fresh enough in my mind for me to accurately represent them. Um, we're going to have to talk about it soon because it is militarily run. Like it's crazy how right. tight of a ship Disney is because you think when you get thousands and thousands of people within your borders, mm-hmm. basically like they sign into these gates yeah. and now all of a sudden you got to control all of these people to do exactly what you want them to do. Yeah. And you have to get them to spend money and you need them happy because mm-hmm. you gotta, you gotta keep it the most magical place on earth. And so nothing can go wrong. Right. And and that whole logistic process of all the staff and the things you don't see, because it feels like a free for all when you're there, you know, you, you just go, you just walk around, you just do what you do, whatever you want. You check out all the rides, you eat the food, go places, but that's all organized and you're all doing exactly what they want you to do. And if you don't, they're ready to stop it instantaneously. Like people, people come out of the walls beside you kind of thing. Like, really yeah like it's it's like crazy crazy tight run i've heard nightmare stories of people who have worked there really yeah well yeah. We'll, we'll have to get into that uh, on another episode mm-hmm. I gotta that's start, super cool i gotta start making notes yeah. i gotta start making notes about uh things we touch on yeah. um in episodes that we want to go back to because i yeah. know there's like at least three things we've yeah. brought up now that have just gone yeah unspoken about but would make good conversation topics hey man also where the fuck is Otto, dude <laughs> well i mean did he say he was on his way uh he said um what time is it now it's seven o'clock i think at five five twenty <laughs> he said i'll leave soon right so yeah so so he's probably gonna leave soon yeah yeah so he's probably gonna leave soon yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> has yet to leave yeah yeah, should we uh, should we pull a break, Parker? Let's do it. Seven o'clock on the dot. Yeah. All right, dude. See you. We're back. We're back. Uh, go away, green. Uh, also, go away, fruit fly. Go away, green. Um, it uh, it's a color that your eyes naturally avert from, and interesting. So, and so they paint um, not only things that they don't want you going near, but also ugly things like trash cans, right. construction walls, anything like that. You see like transformers painted this color often as well too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that that's true. Yeah. They they are that kind of ugly yeah. green. Yeah. But it's it's to to keep you from focusing on them. You just kind of glance away. They also have what's called blending blue um, that's also used in a somewhat similar way. Right. It's kind of like sky blue but a little more bland. Right. Um, but yeah, they're they're just uh, naturally um unenthusiastic colors right and so you just don't tend to focus on them especially in a place like disney where you have stimulation coming from interesting all directions you just tend to not focus on the green hmm. yeah man that's very cool just wanted to finish that one off so i did want to ask you uh you may where'd you go on your last trip your most recent trip um uh, my most recent trip uh was to philadelphia Philadelphia, right yeah. for the uh, Tame Impala concert. Yeah, man, we're less than a month away from the from the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you mean, want you want to talk a bit about uh, yeah, your I, your upcoming trip? I mean, yeah, sure. I want to answer your question first, though. I, uh, can oh I talk yeah, about yeah, Philly? Can I talk about yeah. Philly please, bit? please. Yeah. So the Eastern United States um, is like if if you gave if you gave me the option to like you've got you got like three days go somewhere in the world eastern u.s is for sure where i would go really eastern american cities despite the 
um, some of the cultural problems. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, take Chicago. They've got a huge gun issue. Yeah. Philly, you know, gangs, violence. You know, the, the, these sort of things exist in these cities. But they're also the first cities um, – of the United States, yeah. it's where the colonizers were landing, it's where the thirteen colonies were separated. Mm-hmm. It's it's the foundations of the United States. And me being <laughs> enthusiastic about history, um, I, I just think it's really really cool to see some of these places where, you know, the arguably um, you know the the world's largest power. I mean, you know, you could look at China or Russia, but I mean, the United States is. Is pretty huge very very, yeah. very valid candidate on that oh, list yeah. and seeing the baby steps you know the first the first little bits of what is now the united states mm-hmm. uh is just really really cool yeah. to me um so in in philly um they have uh this area of philly called old city and it's it's on the it's on the river which makes sense because everything in those days was near bodies of water because that was the method of commuting mm-hmm. Uh, it's near near the river and uh, it's it's where the Liberty Bell is. Um, I don't know if you know about the Liberty Bell at all. Okay, well, I won't, I won't get into it too hard, but um, it's it's just it's like kind of one of those places like in Boston where the uh, um, you know the Declaration of Independence was signed. Sure. And you know it's it's places like that mm-hmm. where you can go to these specific spots that have huge, historical mm-hmm. implications on what the u.s looks like today yeah um i can remember just casually walking through philly um after getting dinner and uh we we were just checking it out we didn't have very long um and so we walked through uh this kind of one more modern area before we got to old city and it felt a little bit like a like a spy movie because uh, they had a penitentiary and then uh the FBI building yeah. and then the um, like a mint like uh, right like yeah it's I don't know if it's like Bank of America or something like that where they generate cash yeah right? it's it's like oh Federal Reserve that's what it is sure yeah yeah and so, so they, they had all of these things like side by side and uh, it, it was just like these big like looming buildings that yeah. were all like black right and, like super sleek looking and it was like it was just kind of cool i've never seen anything like yeah, that that is cool because it's like fbi is like a something you hear about on the news or in movies yeah. you know and it's like never i've never had a personal encounter with the fbi right and it's like oh wait they actually exist yeah there's like hundreds of people working in that building yeah um that's neat, super cool. Neat, neat to see, but but on the on the historical side, we would get walking and after dinner we see the see the the Liberty Bell, which was cool and just like you know bits of American history. But the coolest thing that we saw was as we're walking, there's this little little building that's quite unremarkable looking, um, and it had a little sign beside it. And I'm a sign reader when I when I go mm-hmm. places. I love reading the information yeah. that they have. Sure, you know, yeah, like the, the tourist board puts up, yeah. you know, little signs, and I'm like, "Hang on, I gotta, I gotta see what's going on yeah. here." You can do a lot of that in Calgary too, mm-hmm. um, which I've also found very fascinating living here. But um, I was, I was reading this little sign, and it's telling you this about this little building, and um, it's like now it's it's closed down, but it was a bar where. George Washington and his buddies would go and drink. It was Damn. like it was like their favorite weekend spot. Yeah, you know, and it's just like this little unremarkable, like old styled home yeah. looking thing in the middle of Philadelphia. Just as you're walking along the sidewalk, it's like uh, this little place. That's super and, sick. And uh, yeah, it's like seeing those seeing those places where you're like, wow, there were like. I could just only imagine the conversations, you know, mm-hmm. that, that would have gone down inside that little building right there. You know, and seeing things yeah. like that that I really enjoy. And, and Philly, Philly was very rich for that. There were lots right. of really cool places. And downtown Philadelphia is fantastic. It's such it's really cool layout. Uh, like their grid, their grid layout is really spectacular. Uh, City Hall is a gorgeous building. Mm. It's just it's got good feel, really friendly people. Uh, cool markets all over the place. Lots of really cool public art. Just tight spot in general. So yeah, I, I really yeah. really liked Philly. Uh, it's it's up there with with my favorite downtowns. That's that I, super that cool, man. Yeah, yeah, dude. 
Yeah, Philadelphia is a is a city that I find super interesting, even not knowing anything about it. It's got a cool ass name, it does. right? It like does. that is a cool yeah, name, cream um, cheese city. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, it's fucking. Yeah, it's, it's something I want to see eventually for sure. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. definitely would recommend. Yeah, would recommend. You know, hit like though. Boston, New York, Philly, kind of Washington, all in kind of the same stroke. I haven't yeah. done Washington yet. I probably should. Yeah. The Philly cheesesteaks, man. Yeah, have you had Philly cheesesteak before? I've made one at okay. home. I doubt it was quality. Oh yeah. man, I, I've had them at restaurants here, yeah. and like they're always good. But there, it's like this is this is next. Level. Yeah, well, it has to be. Yeah, right? it's yeah. Like, this is proper. Yeah, yeah. But but there's like a way to order them that like in order to get them to like make it right. You gotta like use the right terminology. Oh otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, they give you a shitty one. No so, way. Yeah, so you, you gotta like Google up how to order yeah, a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. <laughs> hey yo, let me get let me get that uh, the gabagool on the fucking sandwich. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to get a fucking slice. <laughs> hey, just trying to get a fucking slice over here. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Classic. That was funny. Um. But yeah, man, the upcoming trip, I'm really, really stoked for that. The Hamilton Morris thing was uh, that's was new. cool. That was an add-on, and I'm I'm really, really excited. That'll be for that. so cool. Yeah. He he's just gonna speak on stage for like an hour or so, what? So there's a special feature. So yeah. they they're presenting like a new episode of kind of like the stuff that he does. Yeah. Um, Pharmacopia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're. They're gonna air one of those, and then there will be like, um, yeah, it'd be like a Q and A afterwards. He'll probably so cool. he'll probably do some kind of speech, I could imagine. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, there's a Q and A at the end, which uh, I'm gonna have to start thinking of questions. Yeah, yeah dude, but, Hamilton Morris is such a cool individual. He is. A, he's so unique, he man. He's like, such a neat guy. Yeah, yeah. He's also like, he's he's so knowledgeable man yeah like dude he really knows his chemistry eh? He like does. just like he does. through and through yeah 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 no i'm i'm really stoked for that but yeah anyways the uh the trip i'm heading down to uh to san bernardino or near san bernardino california mm-hmm. and uh gonna be making my way hopefully catching a bus if not a bus then i guess i'll just pay for a super expensive cab yeah get get in the cab with the backpack in the tent to the yeah. festival grounds uh of which i will then spend the next three days uh vibing out camping vibing out camping yeah. in the desert um that would be super cool yeah man we got uh iggy pop tame impala king gizzard and the lizard wizard yeah men i trust Oh yeah. Uh, there's yeah. There's there's gonna be uh, oh and the um, um, the band that I uh, played for you yesterday, Black Country New Road. Oh okay, they're, cool. They're gonna be playing. Is that as how well. you found out about them? Yeah, they yeah. were they were on the set list, and I was like, oh, I gotta I gotta check this out. Yeah. Saturday Saturday is just gonna be a massive day. Do you know Do you know Victor Wooten? Yes, the, the bass player yeah. Victor Wooten is uh, is gonna be making an appearance. No uh, way, dude. Reggie Watts. Reggie Watts is tight. Yeah, yeah. Reggie Watts is also gonna be there. Victor it's... Wooten, bass god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bass bass daddy. Yeah, yeah. Man. it's uh, it's just gonna be uh, it's gonna be huge, man. I'm I'm really excited. And um, what day I'm, do you go? I'm leaving on the 29th. September. Yeah. Tight. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that's that'll be like the Thursday night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just man, I can't I can't wait, and it's it's nice too because I think I think you're kind of in this boat as well. It's like, um, you know, sometimes the monotony of life can get a little strong. Oh like, yeah, uh, for sure. Just just going to work, just going to work and coming home and doing the same yeah. shit. It just I it, mean, you can spice it up best it, you can, but it, it can. still doesn't change that eight hours every day that you're just yeah. in the grind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's that's for me what I experienced yeah. at at Firefly last year. Yeah, was, your previous job, right? Uh, no, no, no. I, oh. I was talking about the festival. Oh, the, the sure. festival last year is it is such an isolating experience mm. where all of normal life gets sidelined for three days. Yeah, and it's just gone. You just it doesn't even cross your mind, regardless of the problems that mm-hmm. will be very real on the Monday. Yeah, you know, all of that is just put away, and you yeah. just don't worry about it. And 
that is such a nice and unique feeling Mm -hmm. and it's like nowhere else really can you achieve that i mean i guess when you're on vacation but even then you know it sometimes these things are hard to ignore because you've been on vacation you got you got time to think whereas at a festival it's just music all the time Mm -hmm. and stuff going on um i'm just i'm really excited for that kind of mental uh mental relief yeah it's it's just it's gonna that be, would be so super nice. nice yeah every every morning they have uh they have um sound baths and yoga classes really yeah so Sick. so they have um they've got like a, a natural you got like a natural sound bath that they're gonna do that's like you know with like the singing bowls and the gongs yeah. and all of that which i don't know if you've ever done a sound bath but they're really nice yeah it's it's a crazy experience it's like you can't tell where the sound's coming from. It's right. just all around you. Wow. And uh, yeah, and then and then there's a synth sound bath as well, which uh, tight, uh, dude. Just, That'll be. Are you gonna attend that, Parker? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm gonna the be there. The synth sound bath. Oh, oh. And the mornings. The mornings are gonna be unbelievably gnarly mm-hmm. because you spend 14 hours the day before in the sun, just putting things in your body yeah. and staying up so long and walking around and just it's constant activity mm-hmm. and abuse for the yeah. body and then waking up in the mornings and having that yeah. to just like roll out of bed and just walk over and lay down on a yoga mat yeah and sound bath is just gonna be like oh yes <laughs> give it to me <laughs> But yeah, man, I'm I I can't incredible. It's, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really cool. I've not stayed on the festival grounds before, so tight. Um, that's gonna be that's gonna be a new thing for yeah. me. But uh, do you have any um, special attire that you're gonna be wearing? Uh, I have any any ponchos or robes or anything. I, I do need to get a robe. Yeah. I don't have a robe yet, but it'll definitely it'll definitely be coming. I'm hoping yeah. to get some merch there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I've got I've got a few I've got a few things. Exactly. Do you mind if I uh, take these little guys with me, Parker? Yeah, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> All yours. Thanks, man. Yeah. Dude. I'll bring them back so you can take them to Portugal. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're we're gonna be uh we're gonna be like missing podcast episodes for a while though. yeah like, yeah like i mean i'm gone yeah you'll be gone for that weekend and then i'm gone for the next three weekends so i might, yeah. I might have to do some rant podcasts while you're gone dude that'd be so sick <laughs> just do we, just... we can get all this equipment to you before i dip out mm-hmm. no problem yeah we've we've got we've got upgrades people yeah we're we're uh we're gonna move up from the uh the potato that we've been recording on <laughs> yeah dude speaking of which so the fucking camera quality the last three episodes has been dog shit <laughs> <laughs> just absolute garbage and and the reason for that is I, I was out kayaking the river uh you know a few weeks ago and uh, i get out of the water and i pull my phone out and the fucking glass on my camera is fucking smashed right and so i'm like oh like now how are we going to do this podcast let alone i can't take pictures of anything right Mm -hmm. so i i ordered a um brand new glass screen and it came in you know i got priority shipping Mm -hmm. uh for the next episode of the pod and uh i installed it and the thing just doesn't want to focus you did you did also pay like eight dollars for that thing or something yeah it like is super like yeah pretty cheap yeah yeah it could be like a piece of plastic yeah well i find the interesting thing about it is that when you zoom out mm-hmm. it's like blurry and you zoom in it's perfectly focused it's fine, hey? yeah but i mean like there's mm-hmm. never any situation where we can possibly zoom in on the pod right yeah like yeah. Mm. Um, that's crappy well We've got we've got upgrades. We've got upgrades. Yeah, we got I've, upgrades I've got, coming. I've got a sweet DSLR camera that uh, is gonna get uh, is gonna get podcasted out. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna kit it out with the hardware, and uh, we're gonna be streaming to you in uh, sixty FPS, ten eighty P, real real soon. Dude, it'll it'll be interesting because they've only ever seen us in shit quality so far, <laughs> yeah. right? Like. Yeah. Just one day we're gonna pop up, you know, video uploaded, and yeah. we'll, you'll be able to see the fucking pores in my skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, um, I'm excited. I'm excited, but yeah, yeah, I think I think I might have to uh, I might have to organize a little uh, little rant podcast. Dude, whether, that'd be fucking well, sick, man. Just pull going. like a like a Chris D'Elia congratulations, yeah, pull, or, or like some... a Bill Burr Monday yes, morning podcast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Ooh, oops. <laughs> oops. 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 Oh, but the soundboard isn't even here. That's disappointing. Oops, though, right? Because I was talking. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm. I would definitely. I would definitely consider doing that. I. Uh, I don't know. We. We don't have. Uh, you know, after our initial success, we don't. We don't have. Uh, you know, extreme viewership. But uh, mm-hmm. if if any of you guys listening have uh, any any ideas for content that you would like to see discussed or. Uh, you know, achieved on this podcast. I'm, uh, I'm definitely open. I'm open. Yeah, to I'm open to making. I mean, I just like making content. It's just, it's yeah. a fun thing to do, right? Yeah, man. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, anything, anything people want to see, I'm willing to. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely working on some, some regular segments we can, we can introduce to the, sure. to the pod, and uh, also think some, uh, some friendly competition. Would that would be, be cool. Would, would be it. Would be that would be cool. Would be good as well. I mean, yeah. especially do well once we have the camera, we can uh, we can delve into some more yeah. um, visually uh, interesting yeah. activities as yeah. well. You know, it's like we're we are we are almost entirely conversation, but I mean, it doesn't have to be limited to that. Yeah. You know, you yeah, can, we we can keep doing the podcast and then also have you know other shit on the side too. Yeah. yeah. Some some extra content. Yeah. Yeah, album reviews incoming. Yeah, I I, I really want to do that one. I do a I do a football kick um, <laughs> <laughs> competition. See who can yeah. get it through yeah. the yeah, through man. the fucking field goal. Just yeah, yeah just uh, you know you know like how ridiculous you know the the Australian uh, trick shooters. Yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll just be like. <laughs> Hi, welcome to episode one of Somewhat Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're going to be having a uh, balloon popping competition. <laughs> that's that's what their content has gone to. Hey, it's like they uh, they started off doing like pretty legit, yeah, like crazy. But now it's jumping. a money factory, yeah, right? Now, so it's you know pump out your ten minute video every day yeah, and uh, yeah, pump pump out your ten minute video that is essentially the same thing yeah. with different objects, yeah. as, as the day before. And yeah. the, and the thing about how ridiculous is. You know, I've watched a couple of their videos and now like if I see one of their videos and it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's just like, I don't want to sit through nine and a half minutes of, yeah, of like bullshit, you know? Yeah. No, I have to search for the actual content. Yeah. Just, just filler. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things that I think, uh, that I think I dubs was, uh, one of the goats. Oh Uh, yeah. Is that, that guy created the most fluff, fat free videos that yeah. i've ever seen it's like the man was just straight to the point every yeah. time it was consistently interesting i miss that guy's old videos i think he still uploads the odd video but it's not like it used to be he right does. he did yeah. have some good ones though like the uh the airsoft fatty documentary yeah i saw that one that, that, was, that was a while ago now though yeah, even right yeah, was it was a couple yeah. years now yeah but the, that 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 upload yeah. was like really cool because yeah. it's like he hadn't done anything like no one was yeah. really doing anything like that like yeah. just going and interviewing some dude he's done a couple other ones uh, uh to the same tune right he did, he did that uh the very socially awkward yeah guy. that was a good one too <laughs> yeah. yeah um airsoft fatty do, do you know who danny mullen is yes yeah okay he oh, I, i'm pretty sure danny mullen had uh oh. airsoft fatty on the podcast <laughs> no yeah way. dude yeah, bro, and it was a banger episode, dude. It was so did. good, dude. Danny Mullen is amazing. I love him. I I listened to one of his uh, podcast episodes today, yeah. and it's just you're just like it's fucking hilarious. He's, like he is a purveyor of chaos. Yeah, man. He just, he just likes stirring. Jujitsu legend too. Oh yeah, yeah. Bro. Purple belt, right? Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I remember. I think like one of the first videos I saw of his yeah. was um, one of the. Uh, it was like a, a basically like a trolling episode where he like went in, went in and like you know got beat a couple of times yeah. and was like, oh, I'm just a total beginner, like yeah. you know, and, and he would like, and then he just started ragdolling, but, fucking but he'd people. also be saying like gay yeah. shit to guys when they were on, on the on the mats, and yeah. being like, oh my god, I just want to kiss you so badly, right? Now. <laughs> you know, just like weirding everyone out, They're like man, I do not want to be here with this guy. He's a total noob, yeah. and then he just starts cleaning people yeah. out. But yeah, it's it's like terrifying when you actually see him like go in on something yeah. like, oh boy, he he knows what he's doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I would love to get to that point. It's a lot of years of practice. Oh, definitely huge be, investment of time. Yeah, would be pretty fun. You know, if I would have stuck with it, uh, you know, the whole time, if I didn't just take this year break that I have, you yeah. know, I'd like to think that I'd be, you know, 
Yeah, you, uh, at least somewhere in, in the killer, in the yeah. skill, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, right now I'm so fucking rusty. I'm white. Word. Yeah, I'm white belt. Um, I at my peak I was one of the best white belts in the gym, but that yeah. is not the case anymore by any stretch. Yeah. I mean, it's like any skill, right? You don't practice it for a long time. It. I mean, it'll come back quickly, right? Mm. But it's just, it's not there at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll get my ass fucking wiped today when we go. Like, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Man. Which is you'll, fine. But you'll that's, get, that's okay. Yeah, you'll that's get how a it good, goes. You'll get a good, uh, you'll get a good introduction. Though. Like, we'll spend 40 minutes basically warming up, and it'll mm-hmm. probably be just you and I. So, yeah. Man, so Otto is going to show up. And then we're just going to be like, we're leaving. Yeah. Because, you know, we're going we're gonna to call this in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Otto's going to get here and he's either going to come or he's going to drive back. Well, I mean, I'm questioning if Otto's even going to get here before we leave. Like, dude, we leave in like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that guy. I mean, what That's a Otto Krumas. Yeah. Brother in arms absolute fucking beauty man yeah. but uh solid dude. <laughs> punctuality wise one of the least punctual humans yeah. not the least but one of the yeah. least punctual humans i've ever met for sure do you do you pride yourself on your punctuality parker dude i'm so non-punctual really um I'm pretty on time if I'm awake. If it has anything to do with sleep, I'm not punctual at <laughs> you all. Can't do I it. can't do I it, like dude. How you landed yourself a job that appeals to that side yeah. of you as well. Like, well, and also it, it is a little bit of negotiation at work as well, oh, right? Really? Like, cause, cause, yeah, I mean, there's not many other people at work that are just showing up when they want, and there's no consequences for that. It's right. just like, hey, listen, I know I'm good at my job. I know that. I'm I'm a I'm valuable to this company. Mm-hmm. Listen, like the way I sleep, like I can't quite figure it out yet. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna need some accommodation here, right? Yeah. I'll get my eight hours in every day, yeah. but uh, like it's gonna be a problem for me for for a while. I got to get this figured out. And they're yeah. like, you know what? No problem. Like get your eight hours in every day. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Word. Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not late for things unless I'm very busy. Yeah. Um. And that's that's when I get like, yeah. uh I get behind schedule yeah. on something and I'll spend ten minutes too long at some place yeah. and then it's just late for everything yeah. from that point on. That's where I struggle. But in mm-hmm. in the mornings in the mornings I'm very rarely early, but I'm almost always right on yeah. time. Dude, I, I just have such a fucking hard time with sleep, man. Like, mm-hmm. you, there a fucking train horn couldn't wake me up if yeah. I'm if I'm like three or four hours of sleep. There's mm-hmm. nothing that's waking me up. Yeah, like, really? it's just one of those things. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. i I have to be uh, I have to be careful with leaving my fan on at night, right? Because the white noise will um, tune my ears off to sounds, right? And so when my alarm goes off, I'm less likely to wake yeah. up to my alarm. I have noticed that, but I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a light sleeper. It's like when I'm out, I'm out. But when my alarm goes off, it wakes me up. Yeah, yeah. sure. What time do you usually go to sleep? How like, what's your, what's your sleep schedule look like? Um, usually I'll try for 11. Um, the other thing about my, uh, my sleep fucking my whole sleep thing is my circadian rhythm is like super elongated. Like, right. Like most people get tired after 16, 17 hours awake. For me, I'm fucking still wired until like 19, 20 hours awake. Right. Almost every day. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which. Yeah. Mm, fat yawn there. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't drink coffee during the week anymore. Um, right. Because if I drink, dude, I can drink a coffee at six in the morning. Yeah. I'll be awake until 1, 1 a.m. Really? 100%. 100%. Wow. I mean, it's a different thing if you're drinking two or three coffees four days in a row and then you drink one coffee. That's mm-hmm. a different thing, right? Yeah. But um, if I'm drinking coffee, yeah, I fucking, I'll be awake for 20, 21 hours. Yeah. 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 I, I was n- not typically a coffee guy up until probably like, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago Mm -hmm. i started i started you know the coffees became essential and uh now i can still i can still do it but i'm like pretty on it in the mornings i'm like i'll make time to get uh, yeah like a nice coffee yeah yeah i like ice do you not have a coffee provided at work no oh damn no because i I guess you're on site aren't you yeah 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 well technically we do have a coffee machine but it is 
like the most musty old cure. Oh yeah. You just you wouldn't want to put your lips on yeah. anything that goes through there. So dude, my work just got this brand new fucking like seven thousand dollar coffee machine. It's got like cocoa powder and French vanilla and fucking powdered milk. Like it, it has a, like containers. Is it an espresso? Like does it pull espresso shots? Uh, it, it'll do espresso for you, but it, it'll you you can like, it's like a coffee vending machine. Yeah, it's a coffee yeah, vending machine. Okay, it's got the okay. touch screen on yeah. it. Yeah, oh, it's pretty tight. That's sweet. But yeah, man, fucking waking up in the morning that would be like problematic for me. There's nothing I want more than a fucking coffee when I get to work. It's like oh, like I want a fucking coffee right now, but yeah. it's like I can't do it because I'll fucking mm-hmm. show up at work at 9:30 yeah. a.m. tomorrow. Do you right? drink tea instead or anything like that? Or? Um, I'll drink tea if there's no caffeine in it. But most right. of the time when I get to work. Um, I'm just hitting the fucking hot water. Yeah. 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 Hot water. Plain yeah. hot water. Yep. Really? Yeah. Um, or cold water, but usually when I get to work in the morning, I'm like, you know, your body's still warming up from, from your circadian rhythm. Right. Yeah. And you're like, you're like a little bit chilly. You're like, I want something warm right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the, I know we got to go here soon, but, yeah. uh, that's one of the things that I, uh, I love with, um, with camping, mm-hmm. especially winter camping is I have a, uh, I have a duck down sleeping bag. And so it's got these pillows of duck down, like you know, about that big that sit right. inside the sleeping bag. And when you wake up, you're so warm, yeah. but you have nowhere to be. And so you can just stay in, in the down yeah. pillows and just soak it in yeah. and just, Oh, just absolutely curl up in the heat yeah, for dude. an extra, like half hour yeah. after you wake up, you don't get to do that regular life, yeah. but that is just, I just got a brand new sleeping pad and it's, it's phenomenal, but I need a new sleeping bag. Like, real bad this yeah. fucking sleeping bag like it'll it will never see spring or fall like it's mm-hmm. fucking horrible and and the other thing too is that it's too short for me so if i have my legs stretched out oh. fucking bitch is like oh. at my nipples like it's bad right so that i gotta i'm out camping and i'm sleeping like this every night it's <laughs> horrible fetal position yeah. no other options yeah yeah man hey we gotta go bro yeah we gotta go it's time for jujitsu it baby. is Mm. All right. Thank you everybody for watching if you did. All 31 um, of you. Yeah. All, yeah, <laughs> we we know who's watching now as we see fucking there's yeah. 33 of you every episode watching this shit. Yeah, yeah. we know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two of those are me. Yeah. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> yeah. All right, man. All right. Let's, Let's call it. Dip. Thanks everyone. See you maybe next week, who knows. Yeah. See you.